Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve and in this video we are going to learn how to create some beautiful but very simple wall art just like this or like this and you can use any design software that you like so either Photoshop, Illustrator, Affinity Designer I'm personally going to be using Procreate because I just find it's easier to show you guys what I'm doing on the iPad but really whatever you're comfortable with you can use and you're gonna get great results to make things even easier for you, I created a free toolbox that you can download from the description below. It includes a bunch of really cool watercolor shapes that you can use in the background of your creations. So pause the video, go and download that. Again, it is totally free. And then when you're, once you're ready, let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is to create a digital canvas that matches the size that you want your artwork to be like in real life. So if you have a frame that you know you want to use or a piece of paper or you just know the measurements, write them down on a piece of paper and make sure that they are in inches. That's very important. If you already know about resolution, just go ahead and skip in the video a minute or two. But otherwise, make sure to stick around because that is some super important information that you need to know if you want to create any type of digital art or graphic design for print. You need to know that that is the basic. So one thing to know is the way resolution work on the screen and in printing is basically it's calculated in DPI, which means dot per inches. And what that is, to kind of put it simply, it's how many little pixel squares are going to be in one inches or in one inch, I should say. If you have a very complex picture, uh, like a photograph or an illustration, you want to print at 300 DPI. However, you have something a bit more simple or a very, 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 very large piece that people are not going to see from very close. Uh, you can go down to 150 dpi. You just want to make sure that you're not going any lower than 150 dpi. Otherwise, once you print your artwork, it's just going to look, it's just going to start looking really bad. The one thing to remember is this super simple formula, which is I mean, I say a formula, but it's basically just logic. It's that inches times DPI equals pixels. And I'm just going to show you a really simple example based on what I have here. If my artwork in real life, I want it to be 16 inches by 20 inches, I'm going to take my 16 inches and multiply it by 150 DPI, which is going to give me 2400 pixels. And then I'm going to take my height of 20, pin 20 inches and multiply it by 150 dpi, which is going to give me 3000 pixels. So my digital canvas that I would create would be 2400 pixels times 3000 pixels. So feel free to screenshot this so you always have a little reminder uh, before creating any type of digital canvases because that is super, super, super important. You just don't want to create a beautiful artwork or a beautiful piece that you end up printing and it just looks really bad because you didn't do this simple math beforehand. So go ahead and create your canvas in whichever software that you're using and let's start drawing. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is to find the picture that we want to use as a reference. And for that, you have a couple options. You can either use a picture of your friend or a picture of you, someone in your family that you already have, either like, you know, on your iPad or your computer. Or you can find a picture online. The one thing with this last option of finding a picture online is you have to be really careful that it is a picture that you are allowed to use, you know, that is... Um, copyright free. So you cannot just go on Google and find a picture that you like, you cannot just go on Pinterest or Instagram and find a beautiful picture of an influencer or whatever. That is not going to work. But there are some websites that offers really really high quality pictures and I'm going to link them in the description below so you can find them. This is where I found my own picture that I'm going to use as an example here. So anyway, in both cases probably what you're going to have to do to import your picture in your file is, well first of all, hide this example in my case, but you are going to create a new layer. In this case, we already see that I have mine imported, but in your case, you're going to create a new layer clicking on the plus here, and then using the tool icon here in the add section of the menu, you are going to click insert a photo if the photo that you have is already in your camera roll on your iPad, 
or if you just copied the picture from a website, you're gonna have this paste option here that is gonna be available to you. So you're just gonna click on that and it's gonna paste on the layer that you just created. But in my case, again, like I said, I already have one. So I'm just gonna turn the layer on. And when you paste it, the opacity is gonna be at max. But just so we see what we're doing a little bit better, we are going to lower the opacity by clicking on N here and lowering this little slider here um, somewhere between 20 and 30%. That's really just up to you. Once you've done that, you are going to create a new layer and make sure that your brush is on black or whichever other color that you want your line, um, your line art to be. And you're going to select in the calligraphy uh, brushes, you're going to select Ling Simple, uh, well, that's in French. Uh, for you in English, it's probably gonna be simple line or something like that. It's the third option from the top. And these are regular brushes that come with Procreate, so you don't have to download anything fancy for the brushes. Once you have that, you're going to set it to a fairly small size. So I would say a quarter of the way. And the actual creative part is very, very simple. So on a new layer, what you are going to do when you have your brush is you are going to just start from the top outside of the canvas and start outlining just one side of the face and really simply outline the main elements of the face. So you don't want to draw all the little details. See, even for the eyes, you want to avoid drawing uh, the iris and the pupil, otherwise it's going to look absolutely crazy, trust me. So you see, I just went in and kind of really simply outlined the side of the face, then the mouth, half of the nose, one eyebrow and one eye. Since it's a, a, a bust here, I'm also going to quickly just kind of show that there's something else going on in this picture by kind of really quickly highlighting this side of her arm, a bit of her breast, and then kind of the shoulder and hair, oops, hair section here. And now if we go back and we hide our reference layer by clicking on a check mark here, we can see that all we are left with is this um, really elegant and simple outlines. I did this really quickly so you can see it's kind of a bit wobbly, but you can really take your time and you can even do it a couple times or three times just to really see what features are worth highlighting. Try as many times as you want and once you have something that you're happy with, we're going to add some really nice shapes. I have a freebie that you can download. I mentioned it at the in the intro. And that freebie basically includes a bunch of really cool shapes that have some sort of a watercolor texture to them. I've created them as PNG with transparent backgrounds so that you can import them in Photoshop, Procreate, even Canvas if you want. But I've also created some a Photoshop file and a Procreate file that already has all the shapes included in it so you don't have to kind of go from a file and then import all the little shapes individually. It is totally free, so just go ahead and download that. And in my case, what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna have, probably just gonna add a half moon here. So I'm gonna turn this section on and actually the one I want is already there. It's the half moon and terracotta color. So you can see I would have a bunch of different colors. Actually, that looks pretty good too. I might go with that. And the shape that you have, you can move, oops, just making sure that you have the right layer selected. You can move by using the arrow here at the top and you can place it wherever you want. And you can also resize it by using the little blue dots here, making sure it is on uniform if you want to keep the same proportions or on free form if you actually want to change the proportions of the shape. You can also rotate it by using this green tool here. So go ahead and play with the shapes. Like you can see, I have included a bunch of them with uh, a bunch of various colors within the pre-made files. And there are so many different things that you can create. I mean, that is one example, but I have a bunch of other ones to show you here. So you, you can create really cool faces like this or like this, but you can also use the same technique to create a bunch of like plant 
type of illustration. So here you see I have a eucalyptus branch. And if you're not feeling the creative juices that day, you can even just draw like blobs and it honestly looks super good. So once you have something that you're happy with, once you've done creating, the only thing that you have left to do is to export your file for printing. And the way to do that is access this tool icon here at the top. And you're going to have the share menu here and you're going to select PDF. You're going to select best as a quality. And depending on what you want to do, you're either going to airdrop it to your computer or your iPhone. You can mail it, email it to yourself, text it to yourself, or you can directly just print it if you have your printer connected to your iPad. So these were all the steps that you need in order to create your own wall art. If you do use this tutorial, please share the results with me either on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And if you liked the tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If you have an idea for a tutorial you would like to see, comment below. And make sure you subscribe to this channel because I release new videos every week.